Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, and today we're kissing my pile of shame goodbye and moving on to Hellbrecht, the new model that came out. And so we're going to start off with assembly. We're going to assemble up to the point that it gets in the way of painting, which is going to be broken up into a lot of smaller pieces. And so after, yeah, as we assemble the model, we clean it from all the extra flash and mold lines. And assembly essentially is the main Hellbrick body, his head is separate, his backpack is separate, his right shoulder is separate, his sword arm is separate, his left hand is separate, his I know, little banner with skulls is separate, the base is glued on to his actual base, the servitors are separate, the orc base is separate, and the melted gun in the uh, servitors arm is separate. And then with Milliput, we apply this to the giant creases that are on his cape. And we just fill it in, and then we use a brush with water, and we basically smooth it down. And then we prime the model with Bright Touch General Purpose Gray Car Primer, front and back. And then we move on to undercoating. So with Eschen Gray, Pallid Witch Flush, and White Scar, we're going to prep the model. So we're going to start off with Eschen Gray, and we're going to airbrush this from the shadows underneath to create the depth and the darkness. I want there to be some strong highlight, or not highlights, like strong darkness in the crevices. And then with Pallid Witch Flush, we're going to airbrush this up from the top. And then once that's done, we're going to dry brush white scar white all over heavily. And now with Dark Reaper, Orc Contrast Flesh, Black Templar, Flesh Terror's Red, and Celestial Grey, we're going to paint the Servitors. I just want to get the base stuff out of the way so I can then just focus on Hellbrecht. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Dark Reaper, and what I didn't show was Lamian Medium. We're going to mix Lamian Medium into the Dark Reaper until it becomes this nice, basically, uh, sort of a contrast paint in itself, and we'll apply this all over their clothing, essentially. Then we're going to go with Black Templar's Contrast Paint, and we're going to apply it onto their boots, and to their, uh, whatchamacallit, yeah, the little black, uh, little cables here and there. Mix in with a little bit of Lamy medium to help it flow better. Then we're going to take Orc Flesh and Flesh Tears Red, and just for a splash of color, we're going to apply it to these cables that they have around the area. And then with Celestia Gray mixed with, uh, Lamy medium again, we're going to apply it to the one guy who has a cloth there. Alright, with Steel Legion Drab, Blood Angels Contrast Paint, Rackarth Flesh, Corvus Black, and Averland Sunset, we are going to paint more details on them. So with Steel Legion Drab, uh, with Lamian Medium, we're using Lamian Medium pretty much with everything, I'm going to apply this onto his Purity Seal. Then what I'm going to do is let it dry, and so, if mixing it with Lamian Medium, it's not really one-to-one, -one, it's like, sort of like that, it's as best as I can guess. Then after the first coat, and once it dries, we then water it down a little bit more with a little bit of water, and then we apply this onto it again, and so it floods mostly the recesses, making them even darker. Then with Blood Angels Red, we're going to apply this with a little bit of Lamian Medium, we're adding Lamian Medium pretty much to everything, and then it's just going to go onto the Purity Seal, just something quick, simple, done. And then with Averland Sunset, we're probably going to have to do about two coats. We're going to paint the uh, thick cable there with yellow. Then we're going to take Corvus, Corvus Black, which is a, it's black, but it's an off black. It's a slightly grayer black. And we're going to paint thin line strips for the power cabling. Then we're going to take Rackarth Flesh and mix it with Lamian Medium until we get to the consistency we like. This is mostly a skill thing. You're going to have to try a little bit. And then we're going to apply it over his skin. And once that's done, we're going to apply a second layer of Rackarth Flesh, but water down with a little bit of water more, so that it just mostly floods into the recesses. So there is a very bright light at the most raised areas, and a very dark recess. Well, as dark as you can get with Rackarth Flesh. 
Now with Auric Flesh, Mornfang Brown, Doombull Brown, Rhinox Hide, and Gene Stealer Purple, and Lamian Medium, we're going to paint, well, the Orc. And also, once again, not features Lamian Medium. So, we mix Lamian Medium with Auric Flesh and a little bit of water, and we apply it to the Orc Flesh. Simple enough. Then we take Mornfang Brown, mix with Lamian Medium until it gets the consistency we want, with a little bit of water, and then we apply it to his pants. And then I completely forgot to get the footage for it because it was so fast. Basically, I did the exact same thing with Doombull Brown to his boots. Then we went with Rhinox Hide, mixed with Lamian Medium, and then applied it to the leather wrist guard and his belt and overall thing. Weird fashion sense. Then with Gene Sealer Purple with the same thing, we applied it to his tongue, mouth, and lips. Now I'm going to use some oil washes, cheap oil paints that I picked up for like 20 bucks at Michael's, with Viridian Hue, Magenta, I don't use Titanium White, I thought I would, but I don't, Burnt Umber, or Burnt Sienna, and Black. <laughs> We're going to create these washes, and so basically I use Mineral Spirits mixed in, and then I just apply the wash on, and then I use makeup sponges to remove it right afterwards, or after it dries enough. And so, Viridian Hue on the skin, Magenta onto the lips and mouth, and then remove that. And then I take Magenta and I paint it directly on, diluted, uh, or made to flow good with uh, some mineral spirits. I apply it onto his vein, apply it onto his cut, his nose, and some ears, and then I take a sponge and apply it off, and it creates like this fleshy, pinky flesh onto the orc. Then with Burnt Sienna, I apply the wash to the arms of the servitors, and then I wipe it clean. Then I use the black onto the, well, the clothing, boots, and these hoses that are on the servitors, and then I wipe them clean. What the oil paints just do is they add a certain sort of texture and look, grainy look to it. I don't know, I kind of like it. And it also adds some depth that's very easy to control. And then I take Burnt Umber, and then I just do the same thing with a wash onto the orc's pants. And now with Baneblade Brown, Steel Legion Drab, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Troll Slayer Orange, we're going to do some more details on the orc. So with Steel Legion Drab, the darker brown, we're going to apply this to all, like, five or six teeth that he has. Then we're going to go with Baneblade Brown and just apply it onto the tips, just so you can see some bright points on there. Then with Evil Sun Scarlet, a very fine brush and enough water to make it flow better, we will carefully apply it to his eyes. And then we'll do the same thing with Troll Slayer Orange, but we'll only paint as best we can around half of his eyeball, each of his eyeballs with this. Alright, I'm doing this step now because it takes uh, quite some time overnight for it to dry, so I'm going to take some Elmer's Gel Glue and apply it to the base, which I did apply Liquitex Modeling Putty all around to fill out the flat parts of the base. And basically once I has the gel, I'm then going to apply the rocks on it and then just put it to the side and let it stay there overnight and probably even longer for it to just dry and solidify. Alright, I'm showing this pieces of Helbrecht because this is the finest detail I'll probably ever have. Perfect highlighting, perfect shadowing, shadow and all that stuff. And because I'm going to use... The reason I go through so much effort into these undercoats is because it makes my job very easy for spotting out the details. A lot of essentially washes are going to be applied to this and all the highlighting and stuff is going to be done naturally already. So, here's what they look like in the pre some people probably can just do this because this is like this is three colors technically gray white or off-white and white this could pass for a tournament perfect detail 
and now with Abaddon back and Lamine medium, mix together till I get a good flow, and then with a little bit of water to help it flow better, I then apply two coats of this to the cape. However, the second coat has a little bit of more water because I just want it to flow into the recesses. And then I take the oil paint and I make a oil wash and I apply it on. However, I screwed up. The It should have been... I added too much ink into it, or paint. It should have been more diluted. Essentially, I put it on and let it dry too long, and then it hardened up too much. And I had spent a lot longer than I should have with a sponge trying to scrape up and clean off the excess. So I should have done a much uh, thinner wash and it should have immediately started uh, cleaning it off with the sponge. Alright, now it's been quite some time. I then, well, remove the excess sand. It's all dried on there. Then I take Liquitex uh, Matte Varnish, which is a terrible matte, by the way, but I use it as a sealant, and I just apply it all over the sand on the base to make it seal in there. Alright now, with Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red, and Troll Slayer Orange, we're going to do the red on his cape. Now, we're going to start off with Mephiston Red all over, on his purity seals that he has on his right leg, his cape, and his purity seal paper that he has elsewhere. So he has some purity seal wax on his right leg, and we're just going to only paint that. We're not going to paint the purity seal that he has on his legs or on his left arm in the same color because it they'll just blend into the background and might as well not be there. So we're going to distinctly leave those out. But everything else, Mephiston Red. Then we're going to go with Evil Sun Scarlet. Now for the cape, we're going to make sure the Evil Sun Scarlet is hit with a little bit of water and we're going to apply it on all the major areas. The, the parts of the cape that are where the sun won't hit or is at the very bottom or towards his back, we're not going to touch. But we're going to paint Evil Sun Scarlet in sort of a feathery pattern all along uh, the open parts to make it look like it transitions from the dark red to this lighter red. And as far as the purity seal stuff, for the purity seal wax, I'm going to paint a ring around the edges and the center. And as far as the paper, we're going to paint the edges and the folds. We're going to paint around, I'd say around 30 to 40 percent of the paper folds. Then we're going to move on to Wild Rider Red. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply this uh, on as far as the cape, we're going to cover around 50 to 60 percent of the cape with this, the red parts of the cape with this Wild Rider Red. Make sure it's watered down enough. We're going to paint in a feathery, like a bunch of little lines back and forth to make it blend into the area. And then with the paper, we're going to paint only the edges and the folds. We're going to paint around 15, maybe 20 percent of the paper folds with this. And then we're not going to do pure Troll Slayer Orange. We're going to mix Wild Rider Red with some Troll Slayer Orange and we're going to paint for the cape, just like 10 to 20% of the cape, the most open areas where the sun would obviously be hitting it. And then we're also going to do the same thing with the paper. We're going to put it on the edges, and we're going to put it on the edges of the purity seal wax. And so we only want to put little small amounts of this bright color on there. And then if you want to, in a few places with pure Troll Slayer Orange, you can add a dot of it onto some very sharp bends on the paper. And now with Rune Fang Steel, the air version, the only good version of this paint, and Transparent Burnt Sienna from Liquitex Acrylic Ink, we're going to mix it together till we get this nice gold. And then we're just going to apply it everywhere on to the gold model, and it's going to do all the highlighting and stuff for us. Easy.
And now with Rune Fang Steel Air and Carbon Black Acrylic Ink, we're going to apply this to all the base metal. However, so the Carbon Black is a very, very strong black, so I don't even put a full drop into the Rune Fang Steel, but I think I applied a little too much still, like half a drop was still a bit too much, and the metal was very dark. So, oops. Now, I didn't show the paint, but I decided to make an oil wash with burnt sienna. It's this brownish, kind of orangish color. It was er featured earlier in this video. And then I apply a very thin wash of it all over to the gold, and this went straight into the recesses and stuff. A very uh, diluted wash of it. And then I just used uh, sponges and just cleaned up the excess and stuff. And basically, the armor was, while benefiting from the undercoating was still not as good as it could have been so I added this to add more depth into it and it worked out well and then with rune fang steel and carbon black I then apply this just to the metals of the servitors and also the orc Alright, with Iron Warriors, Iron Hand Steel, and Iron Breaker, we're going to fix up the metal. So what we're going to do is going to start with Iron Warriors, and we're basically just going to dry brush this darker, this dark metal onto the very dark metal that already exists, or we're going to paint lines onto the chains and stuff. Then we're going to go with Iron Hand Steel and basically do the same thing, but it's a lighter dry brush on the more raised areas or places closer to the sunlight. And then with Iron Breaker, we're going to do a very light dry brush, or we're going to paint lines on the chains to yeah to basically just highlight very light very simple and then finally his uh whatever the iron halo thingy he has up top there we're just going to dry brush some iron breaker on it because in the box it fades from gold to silver and so this just does it well here And then with Steel Legion Drab and none of the other colors, mixed with some Lamian Medium, I apply this onto the skulls and it looks good. I was like, dang, I'm keeping this. And now with Corvus Black and Eshin Grey, we're going to paint the Black Templar symbols on his shoulders. We're going to start off with Corvus Black, which is an off black. That's going to be the Black Templar symbol. Then we're going to take Eshin Grey and we're going to paint fine lines in the center of the crosses and on the edges. With a fine brush, brush this is possible. However, the color was pretty weak. And so I don't show the color, but Dawnstone, I take it with a fine brush and the paint water down enough that it'll flow well, I then apply thin lines to highlight it. And it comes out well. Part of the secret to doing this is to, after loading up the brush, is to touch a paper towel so it drains the big drop in excess, and then you just paint the lines. And now with Evil Sun Scarlet and Troll Slayer Orange, we're gonna paint his lantern. His lantern has these lights that come out, so, with Evil Sun Scarlet mixed with a good enough amount of water, not watered down, but just enough to flow better, we then just like tap, tap, tap in, and it fills the gaps. And we're going to do the same thing with Troll Slayer Orange, covering about around half to a little over half of each of these dots as best we can. And then the lamp looks like it's lit. Now with Ulthwan Grey Air, the good kind, and Pallid Witch Flesh, the Citadel color, we're going to paint his uh, white left knee pad and the white cross on his chest thing there and so that cross could have been left alone I wouldn't have to touch it it with the undercoating it looked fine very highlighted even but I accidentally touched it with some red paint earlier and I have to redo it so Uthwan gray is the base color and then we just do some simple edge highlights with pallid witch flesh easy simple done
Now with Steel Legion Drab, Baneblade Brown, and Rackarth Flesh, we're going to paint his purity seals that are on him, his main body. We're going to start off with Steel Legion Drab. This is watered down enough, well, with a bit of Lamian Medium, and we apply it onto the smaller purity seals, and they're pretty much good. And so later I'll just apply a, another coating of the Steel Legion Drab with a little bit more water, so that second coat will not ruin the highlights, but it will just flow into the recesses. However, as for the main uh, giant paper seal that he has on him, we're going to start off with Steel Legion Drab, and then we're going to take Baneblade Brown, we're going to cover around, I'd say... 75 to 80 percent of it with Baneblade Brown focusing mostly on the edges the wide edges and the folds and then we're going to take Rackarth Flesh and we're just going to paint the edges the folds and we're going to do like with feathering strokes a little bit onto each of the folds and edges and that'll pretty much do it And now with Corvus Black, Dawnstone, Kisla Flesh, and Rackarth Flesh, we're going to paint his face. And, well, while these are the colors I list, it's more of an amalgamation of stuff, so, and also lobbying medium. We're going to start off with Kisla Flesh and apply this to his face. That's just our base layer. And then what we do is we take a little bit of Corvus Black, very watered down, and apply it to his eyes to add eyeshadow. And then we're going to go back and forth with some Rackarth Flesh, but... It doesn't look that good, so I kind of go back to Kisla Flesh, and then I take very watered down Dawnstone and apply several layers to his face to like add like shading and like aftershave kind of stuff. And there's no real right way to say this, but basically I constantly went back and forth. I kept applying Kisla Flesh for highlights, added the Dawnstone, the super thin watered down wash in order to add shading, and it was this constant back and forth of highlight, wash, highlight, wash to try to get something right. And even the end product I ended up changing after the fact because it kept bugging me, like after I painted all this. And now with a micron pen, a 025 millimeter micron pen, I then paint his pupils. Now here's the thing, I can't actually show this because this is so small of a detail, I literally have to have this next to my face, like my eye is like two inches from it as I get this right. Uh, basically I just tap 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 and spin the pen around to get the circles. I can't actually show it, I can only describe it. And now with Ulthuang Grey Air, the only good version of this paint, and Thondia Brown, which is a brown, but it's not a very dark brown. And we're basically just going to paint the script on his purity seals. So he has a bunch of red purity seals, they're going to have white. Now in the box art, there are also the painting of white swords on that. I'm not doing that, I'm not that skilled yet. And so we just paint with a very fine brush and very controlled paint. We make sure it's watered down enough with a little bit of water and then we tap a paper towel to get rid of the giant flowing excess. And then we just do basically, it's Morse code, dots and dashes, dots and dashes, back and forth. And then we do the same thing with Thondia Brown on the other purity seals that are, are on his main body. All right, now with ultra matte varnish and gloss varnish, we are going to paint, uh, well, we're gonna seal in the model. So basically, here's how it works. If it's not metal, ultra matte. If it is metal, gloss varnish. We then assemble the model.
And then with Blood for the Blood God, we then paint his sword, the hole around the orc, and put a little bit of it on the cloth of the servitor. And done. All right, and pretty close to the box art. I mean, there's some things I can't replicate with the box art. I just can't do it. I'm not that skilled yet. Um, yeah, that was. It was a very simple, straightforward model. I just had to pre-plan a lot, and it went very easy. Uh, the only thing that was a problem was I just couldn't get his face right. It's like it was. Ve it's very blank. That's the thing, there's not much with his face, he doesn't have much expression, there's not much there, he has a giant bald head, and his face is just very straightforward. There are three heads, and so I went with this one. I knew the helmet wasn't going to fly, but... Um, yeah, a very straightforward, simple model. If it wasn't for me kind of messing up on the head, I would say this would have been a 9 out of 10, but I'm going to have to say 8 out of 10. Pretty good, very simple, very straightforward, easy model. The only problem is, is that... Eh, eh, I didn't do good on the head, that's, that's, that's just pretty much it, it held it back. But alright, a pretty simple, straightforward model, easy to do. It didn't take that much time in reality, even though it's been quite a while since my last video, it's just, it's simple. It's Christmas time and I'm goofing off, what do you expect? Alright, more to come soon enough. So like the video if you like the video, share it if you want to share it. Uh, these other things I can't remember. I'm tired. What can I say? All right. I'll see you hopefully sooner. Or, actually, no, not that soon. Christmas is right next. So Merry Christmas, you all. Have some fun. I'm going to go goof off now. Bye.